What the shit? Carmilla knew my mother? Whoa, plot twist. This just got weird. Eliza, why didn't you tell me? I didn't even know. Hey, stop metagaming, you two. Sarah's right. Please stop role-playing as though you can hear one another. Now, back to Carmilla's speech. She continues to address Eliza and the demons gathered around the obelisk, the man still tied to it, screaming in desperation. So many more innocent women and children have been slaughtered since Eliza's dear mother was slain. And they will continue to be killed until every last member of the Inquisition is eradicated. The killings will not stop until we make them stop. The demons let out another loud series of cheers at the promise of the Inquisition's great demise. I let out a cheer as well, Woo! because this is something I know my character would do. But why would Carmilla be saying this kind of stuff? My mother never told me anything about talking to vampires before, not once. One by one, I have spent the last several decades hunting down members of the Inquisition, slicing their heads from their bodies, just like they did to my friends. Soon, they will pay for the violence they inflicted against all the witches of the kingdom. All right, she's speaking my language. Tonight marks a special night. Tonight, justice will be served. I give all of you, especially Eliza, the one, the only, Commander Claude Frollo. She yanks off her prisoner's bag to reveal a hideous, frail old man, his hair white as death ah! and face red from his endless pleas for mercy. He looks me. like he's anything. in his mid-90s. This man, I recognize this man. This fiery hatred, it's, it's building in me. All I want to do is rip this fucking man apart with my bare hands. The memories from all those years ago suddenly return to you. You think of your friends who were gutted and decapitated alive by cloaked men on horseback. They were all led by the man who is now bound to the demonic stone obelisk. His pointed, cruel face is unmistakable even 50 years later. Your blood boils and your heart rages with a fire you never knew you had. Carmilla loves seeing this side of you. For 50 long years, this man has evaded justice, safe behind armored guards in palaces and castles. But now that he is finally with us, the lone survivor of his brutal attack on the Natra Eldritch Coven will finally exact her vengeance. I stare at him with all the fury I have in me. This fucker killed my mother, my friends, everyone I knew and loved. Because it's been so long, I had completely given up on getting my revenge and moved on from having any desire for payback. But now that I have the opportunity right in front of me, all the memories from that horrific day flare right back into my mind. This is my one chance to get back at him, my only chance at revenge, and I will take it. I will kill this animal. I will make him pay for what he did to me. Eliza, I know what you want to do, and you have my permission to do it. Kill. Kill to your heart's content, dear witch. I step out from my place in the circle and slowly walk toward him, savoring this moment for as long as I can. Ridding this world of all evil people who prey upon innocent women and practitioners of magic is what I pledge to do. This must be why Carmilla brought me here. Without any more hesitation, I fly forward toward this bastard and plunge my nails straight into his fucking chest. I was powerless to stop him before, but now he's powerless to stop me. Yes, kill for your master. Kill for yourself. Kill for your mother. With all ten of my nails still in this piece of shit's chest, I rip them away and then slash, gash, and slice them back into his body over and over again in all directions, mincing up the murderer of my family until he's nothing except a pile of diced up meat. His endless screams cease, and what's left before you is nothing except dead crimson mush. I hope you enjoyed getting your revenge by murdering a 97-year-old man. I feel amazing. Justice has finally been served. I'm glad you feel that way. After you exact your revenge, the obelisk glows, emitting a foreboding red luminance. You look back to Carmilla and see that she is basking in front of it, arms wide open and eyes closed. From the top of the obelisk then glows a bright ball of energy. It gets larger, and then from it fires a bright beam of crimson light straight into Carmilla's chest. 
her eyes shine a blinding white, and she cackles while this is happening. After she has finished absorbing whatever the obelisk just threw at her, she simply swoons and plays around, feeling incredible. Her eyes return to their normal red, and she looks at you as though nothing happened at all. Carmilla, what the hell was that? Oh, that stuff with me just there. Think nothing of it. Just a little me thing. You got your revenge, and that's all that matters for the moment, dear pet. I'm still going to ask you about what that was later. But for now, and I can't believe I'm saying this, thank you for giving me the chance to kill that murdering sociopath. You're quite welcome, dear witch. It was quite cathartic for me to see you rip that piece of shit into a hundred pieces. Thank you for putting on such a good show for the demons, too. They haven't had good entertainment in a long time. Well, um, I'm just happy to oblige, I guess. That's good to hear. Here is your wand back, as promised. She hands you Darkweaver. It's still in perfect condition. I take it and put it in my knapsack. Thank the Dark Gods it's safe again. As much as I like watching this happy reunion, I unfortunately must be off. Some minor duties require my attention. I leave you here. Go on. Mingle with your new family. She then turns around and runs off past her demons, disappearing into the woods. Whatever needs her attention is clearly important to her. I look around to see if any of the demons are going to introduce themselves to me. You do that, but notice that none of them seem to be interested in engaging with you, at least none that have built up the courage to do it themselves quite yet. Some of them stick around and twiddle their thumbs, while others go off by themselves now that their master is no longer present. I'll work up the nerve to talk to one of them soon. It's just a lot for me to take in at the moment. Plus, I still don't plan on sticking around for long. While I'm waiting for Carmilla to come back or for one of the demons to come up to me, I may as well kill some time. I sit down, put my knapsack in both hands, and open it up, ready to start brewing some healing paste. You reach in and grab your tools and ingredients, ready to create the paste. However, everything is much smaller than you're used to, and the intricate handling of materials required may not be conducive to long, weapon-like fingernails. Roll for dexterity to determine how well you handle your materials. A 13, what does that mean? By following what you remembered about Herbology, you are able to mix together a rudimentary healing paste that you then spread into a small glass bottle. When you finish closing the bottle, you unfortunately tear open your knapsack with your fingernails by accident, spilling out all of its contents. No, those were a year's worth of reagents and tools. Now they're gone and wasted. You notice your wand spill out among the items as well. I pick it up quickly. I won't lose Dark Weaver again so long as I live. Carmilla reappears just in time to see what had happened. I'm back. Turns out it wasn't such a big deal at all. Just a minor adjustment had to be made. Oh dear me, did my pet break something? I back away from my mess, keeping the bottle of healing paste concealed. I then tell her that I tore apart my human knapsack and supplies that I just got in some general store in order to fully accept and embrace my new demon self. That was such a good line. I'm not even going to have you roll for deception on that. Wow. You went through quite a transformation in such a short time. Oh, my little pet is behaving so well. It's all thanks to me, really. I'm the one who trained you. Is there anything else my mistress needs from me? I ask. Aren't you the eager little pet? I do actually have something to show you. I'm sure you'll find it quite interesting. Come, follow me this way. I do that without any fuss. She leads you to another path just beyond the trees that border the clearing. The branches here do not have any wooden ornaments at all. It's clear this path has been designated for Carmilla only. A few more minutes pass, and you're well beyond the sight of any of the demons you saw earlier. She guides you further before introducing you to another clearing, this one smaller and more private. In the middle of it is a large, reflective plane of glass that hovers before you. What in the nine great hells is this thing? This, my dear, is a magic mirror. I simply picture who I want to see, and I am able to observe them with complete precision. It's quite a handy tool, really. So you're saying that if I look at it and think of my friends, I can just watch them? Why don't you see for yourself? She gestures for you to stand in a specific spot so you can see the mirror from the best angle. Very well, I'll follow along. When you get into position and stare straight into the mirror, you only see blurry visuals at first, but moments later the image gets sharper and it starts to show what looks like Camilla bracing herself against a tree, her hand clutching onto her shoulder. Camilla, is that you? Thank the dark gods you're still alive. Yep, that's me, alive and well. I figured you may be relieved to see that she's okay. What a good friend you are. 
I ask how I can see Marge and Lana, just out of curiosity. All you must do is think of the person you most want to see, and the mirror does the rest. Okay, let's see what Marge is up to. You switch it to what she's doing, and you see that she is rapidly swimming down a river as fast as she can, pushing through the water with her powerful flippers. Marge, that's a nice dolphin form. I've never seen you like this. Thanks, witch. You'll be able to admire my sleek, fishy body in person if I survive. Sounds like a plan, Druid. Right now, I want to see what Lana's doing. The mirror switches its scene over to her, along with Skelga. You see them fighting a giant green monster. Lana, why the hell are you naked? I was taking a swim and Goblin stole my shit. Why am I not surprised? We'll get her some clothes once we reach my village, demon lady. I smell an in-game shopping trip. You know, even though we've all had our differences, I'm still relieved that you're alive. Ah, uh, aren't you sweet, demon bitch? Up yours, fish tits. Eat shit, cunt waffle. Is this their way of making up? I have no idea, but I'm just gonna accept it for what it is. Wait, Eliza, weren't you ready to kill us just this morning? Yes, I was, but that was before a vampire kidnapped me and turned me into this. My standards for new friends are pretty low right now. You bitch! You'll always have me, hun. Thanks, Camilla. You need to survive this most of all. I'm trying my best here, but my opponent isn't making it easy. Just focus on yourself, I should be fine. Eliza, don't you want to know why your friend was clutching her shoulder like that? Oh my goodness, I was so excited to see her alive, I must have overlooked that. I'm going to look at her again. What did I just say? You take another good look at your best friend and notice, to your shock, that blood is seeping out in between her fingers. She winces, holding herself up, seeming like she's in a lot of pain. What the fuck? How the hell did this happen? Let's find that out together. This mirror can not only see what is, it can also see what was. Okay, I want to see about five minutes into the past. Simple enough. Just think of your friend, and then a number, like five. And the mirror will show you everything that happened from then until now with complete accuracy. All right, I follow her instructions so I can see how Camilla got injured. You do that, and are now able to witness every moment of her fight as it happened, as though it had been recorded prior. After a few more minutes of watching, you see that she has been injured several times, and the wraith is nowhere to be found. From what you're seeing now, you worry for her safety. She may not make it out of this fight without some assistance. Carmilla, I need to go. I need to rescue my friend. And so you shall. I give you permission to seek out Camilla Lightwielder. Hey, how did you know her name? I have my ways. Go now, pet. Run to your friend and make sure she's safe. I find it a little odd that you're just letting me go like that, but I'm too worried to have any objections right now. Using my witch's instinct, I pinpoint where Camilla is and then dart off in that direction as fast as I possibly can, not looking back. Yes, that was a 17. Great roll. With a powerful starting spring, you dash off in the direction where Camilla is having her battle. Based on how high you rolled with how fast you naturally are in your demon form, you will reach her in about 30 in-game minutes. Hang in there, Camilla. I'm going to save you just like you saved me. Then everything will be back to normal. When you sprint through the black tangled trees passing over the wooden ornaments and symbols, the demons who were standing with you in the circle now stare squarely at you unsettlingly, yet they do not attempt to interfere. You continue running until you are well past the unnatural corrupted trees and within the presence of the more familiar green ones that make up a majority of this forest. Thank Christ that scene's finally over. Now that it's time for the good stuff, Let's go back to me and Skelga's awesome fight. Yeah, but last I remember, our weapons got destroyed. Oh, fuck, you're right. When we left off on your scene, you two had dealt some severe blows to the hopping glutton. However, it is now much angrier than before, determined to kill both of you. New friend, I'm sad to say that we may have pushed our luck too far. Without our weapons, this could be our final fight. Should you perish here, my goddess will surely grant you a place in her realm. What kind of talk is that, bitch? We're getting out of here alive and we're making it back to your village. I love your optimism, little lady. The hopping glutton regains itself after its rage and locks its gaze on Lana. Remembering how she stabbed out one of its eyes, the demon viciously lunges forth, attempting to grab her. How do you react? I dart my way right between its arms before it can get a hold of me and plunge what's left of my sword ah! straight into its fucking throat. Cunt nuggets. With that unlucky three, your attack fails miserably. You don't move fast enough to complete your strike, and you are entrapped by the hopping glutton. Ah! 
It lifts you high in the air, pinning your arms to your sides, trying to crush every bone in your body as hard as it can. You violently struggle against its murderous squeeze. Roll for strength to break out. What the fuck, Marianella? Oh no, a six. Lana attempts to break free of the creature's grasp, but is unable to do so. It crushes her body in with all the force it can muster, breaking both her arms and a few of her ribs. She is in excruciating pain, crippled, and lost 13 health from this one mighty attack. By my family's name, I'm not going to die here today. Upon seeing my beautiful friend get the life crushed out of her, I fly into a rage and mightily crush both my fists into this fiend's fucking arms. That's a 13. What happens? When you land your powerful blow against the glutton's arms, it lets go of Lana, and she drops to the ground, falling on her side. You deal eight damage to your foe, and its fury is now directed at you. It launches a forceful backhand right against your face. How do you react? I block its attack and then go for a painful uppercut to its jaw. Motherfucker, I got a five. Why are these dice being so shitty now? That's just how Lady Luck works her magic. Well, then you can tell Lady Luck to go fuck herself. I will do no such thing. Before you're able to raise your arm, the hopping glutton strikes a harsh direct blow against your jaw, sending you flying back yet again. You take 10 damage from this strike and are now bleeding from the lip. I swear on my honor, I will rip your fucking throat out and feed you your own tongue. While you prepare your next move, we head back to Marge the Green, as she continues to make her way down the river, swimming toward both of you as fast as she can. Finally, you pay attention to me. My best friend is almost dead and I don't even know it. How far away am I? You should roll for a perception check to find out. It's stupid you can't just tell me, but very well. Nature has blessed me. That's a 16. Excellent roll. While you rapidly swim your way down the river, you think to leap up from the water to get a better look at your environment. When you do so, you're able to get a peek at a nearby fight. The hopping glutton is the first thing you see. But when you take in the whole scene, you notice a horrifying sight, the worst thing you could possibly imagine come true. Lana Ballbust, your best friend in the whole world, is near death, lying helpless on the ground, writhing in agonizing pain. You are about five in-game seconds away from her. Hang in there, Lana, I'm here. Marge, my hero, my savior. The hopping glutton lets out a hideous laugh and takes a booming step toward Lana. It then hoists both of its fists in the air, ready to pound the life out of her. I leap up from the cold, dark rapids of the river and aim my bottleneck nose right at the monster's face before it can kill my best friend. Fuck yes, a 14. My friend's gonna live. Success. You spring out of the river and smash yourself right into the glutton's face, nose first. It shrieks in pain from the hard impact of your attack and stumbles backward, falling onto its back. It takes 13 damage and is unable to get up this turn. By the war god's blessing, that was a nasty blow. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Dolphin Warrior. The pleasure's all mine, barbarian. I transform back into a human so I'm not flopping in this fish form on land. After seeing Marge for the blonde beauty she is, I can't help but tell her that Lana truly is a lucky lady to have her in her life. I thank this badass warrior for her compliment and then rush over to my injured bestie. With nature in my heart, I use half of my remaining mana to restore her health to as high as it will go. That's not so bad. With your nine roll, you restore four points of Lana's health, bringing her to five. However, she's still unable to move on her own, and her broken bones cause her to Ow! writhe in pain once again. One of you will have to carry her. I got you, Lana. I lift her onto my shoulder as carefully as I can. Oh, oh, watch it, I'm injured. Ah, uh, that wasn't too painful. Be proud of yourself. Most adventurers would have fainted from the pain by now. You really are a tough little lady. Lana, how long has she been calling you little lady for? Since we met, why? Nothing, just curious. Before I forget, I'm going to pick up Ass Kicker's axe head. That way I can get my weapon repaired when we reach safety. Ooh, good thinking, Skelga. I also pick up Lady Stabbleton from the ground and put it safely in my pouch. Ah, uh, you remembered. I would have remembered first if you just gave me the time. Whoa, where's this coming from? It doesn't matter, just don't get too chummy with my bestie, okay? Hey, I'll do whatever I want, when I want, and so will the little lady. Ladies, relax. There's more than enough Lana Ballbus to go around for both of you. While the three of you are talking among yourselves, the hopping glutton is still struggling to get back up onto its feet. Moments later, however, you all hear a faint boom in the far distance. This is followed by another, and then a third one, and then a final fourth one, before the source of this noise reveals itself. It springs off of the ground and lands right in front of the hopping glutton, guarding it from further harm. What the fuck? There's another one? 
That's right. The hopping glutton's earlier screams have summoned its ferocious cousin, the bounding glutton. It lets out a loud, hideous croak and prepares to attack. This sucks. We don't stand a chance. I never thought I'd say this, but we need to get the fuck out of here right now. Then what the hell are we waiting for? Let's go. Wait, I quickly transform into a gorilla before I go ahead. That'll give me a good boost to my short-term speed. Marge, you do that. Now both of you, roll to see if you can successfully escape. Skelga, because you're carrying Lana on your back, you'll need to roll higher to succeed. Lucky us, little lady, that was an 18. Shit, how did I roll a two? I'm not fast enough, barbarian, go on without me. No, I'm not leaving until you're safely by my side. Thank you for being this brave for someone you just met. Marge, you attempt to run away as Skelga did. However, the bounding glutton opens its mouth and rapidly lashes its terrible tongue at you. Hang on, barbarian, I got this. I quickly catch the glutton's tongue in midair. Yes, a 20. You're a very lucky woman, Marge the Green. You keep a sharp eye on its rapidly moving tongue and precisely throw your open hand in its path, grabbing it tightly. With your fist now squeezing firmly around the bounding glutton's tongue, you have free reign to do what you will to your foe. Fuck yes. Okay, I grab it with both hands and start spinning this fucking frog around, going faster and faster. Then, like how Mario threw Bowser into a spike bomb, I hurl this disgusting demon right into the hopping glutton, damaging both of my enemies at once. What an epic attack. Roll to see if you succeed in executing it. Okay, Dice, you better not fuck this up for me. Burning Forest, Marianne, why did you have to get my hopes up? You're the one who came up with that awesome move. Unfortunately, because you rolled a six, you are unable to conduct it the way you hope to. You spin round and round until you release your grip on the glutton's tongue in an attempt to make it collide against its cousin. However, because the hopping glutton managed to get up just in time, it caught its cousin mid-flight. While being held, the bounding glutton looks to its battle partner and lets out a wink. Shit, this can't be good. You're right, it isn't. With all its might, the hopping glutton chucks its cousin at you as fast as it can for a killing blow. How do you react? Consicles, I roll out of the way. I hate this fucking game. With that 11, you are unable to avoid this strike. However, you maneuvered yourself in such a way that you don't take a direct hit from the bounding glutton's impact. It crashes into the ground after ricocheting off of you, taking five damage. You, unfortunately, have taken seven damage and are now at just one health. Babe, did you get hurt on the way here? Don't worry about it. It was nothing I couldn't handle. The hopping glutton has just started lumbering in your direction, ready to pound the life out of you. Shit, if I don't do anything, you'll die. Skelga, put me down and help her. I'll be fine here. No, take Lana and get out of here while you can. If I have to sacrifice myself for her safety, I will. Don't talk like that, babe. I gently set my little lady down and then sprint toward the hopping glutton to smash it in the head with what's left of ass kicker. Is that enough? just barely. After you put Lana down, you sprint toward your enemy and swing at it with your wooden haft. However, it raises its fist up just in time to block your strike. You have just smashed your weapon to bits against the hopping glutton's forearm, dealing only two damage. I'm sorry, but how was that anything other than an abject failure? You managed to distract the glutton long enough for Marge to get up. Thanks, babe. You saved my life. I push this bastard away as far as I can so that Skelga can pick up Lana and we can all escape here together. Yes, I got another good roll at the right moment. It seems the dice may actually be on your side. Whatever, just tell me what happens. I will. Marge, you stand in front of your large foe and shove it with all your might. It gets hurled away a few meters and stumbles onto its back after tripping over its own feet. The bounding glutton is also still struggling to get up. Its cousin hurled it pretty hard. Perfect, this is our chance. Let's go quickly then. We won't get another one like this. Both of you, roll to see how fast you're able to run away from the glutton cousins. Pride of Conan, we shall live to see another day. Nature has truly blessed us this night. Skelga, you are able to run fast enough away and scoop up Lana with no trouble at all. Marge, you managed to run away as well, keeping pace with Skelga while still in your gorilla form. Marianella, I'm gonna transform back into a human to increase my long-term speed. Great thinking. You do just that and are able to keep pace with Skelga for a lot longer. You now only have enough mana for one more spell. That's okay. I'm just glad that my bestie is safe in my new barbarian friend's big, strong arms. Thank you again, Skelga. Don't thank me yet. Let's save that until we're out of the woods. Right, but first I have a little score to settle. Excuse me, we just escaped a fight and you want to start another one? Don't worry, it won't be much of a fight. She probably got injured out here too. 
Who are you talking about? I'm talking about the stupid paladin cunt Camilla who abandoned me to look for Eliza. Wait, Eliza's missing too? This night just got a whole lot better. By the gods, Camilla and Eliza sound like complete bitches. Tell me about it. Camilla's a total cunt who stabbed me in the stomach. And Eliza cast a spell on me that made me kill a bunch of innocent people. And Camilla, like I said earlier, ditched me the second she knew her best friend was in danger. Blood of ball, I don't even know them and I hate them already. I'll wring their fucking necks when we see them. Follow me then. I'm pretty sure I know where Camilla ran off to. Finally, I'll be able to get some real revenge for her stabbing me. That holier than thou twat bagel will get what's coming to her. Bitch, your broken ass body can't do shit to me. Go fuck yourself, Camilla. Skelga and Marge will cut your goddamned head off. You'll all have to hurry up then, or else this rabbit wraith might just do the job for you. Speaking of, let's go back to your scene. You're standing in the darkness and looking for your foe who has disappeared into the trees. This rabbit wraith bitch is such a fucking pussy. Where the hell is it? You cannot sense where your foe is at this moment. It seems to have gone too far away for you to detect it. What will you do now that you are out of combat for the time being? During this eye in the storm moment, I decide to heal myself for as much as I can, while also leaving just enough mana for one last holy blast. Blessings to the ancestors, my prayers have been answered. What a roll. You use all but a small percentage of your mana to recover 20 hit points, bringing you up to 22 health. Good thing I saved that until now. When you finish healing yourself, you feel the air around you grow cold and your feet feel especially chilled. When you look down at them, you notice the grass beneath you is slowly turning to ice. This frost bunny is getting on my last nerve. You slowly come to the realization that this is the rabbit wraith's doing. It is freezing the ground all over this area, making it difficult to traverse without slipping. Okay, I'm going to walk on the ice carefully to make sure I don't lose my footing. While you balance yourself on this new terrain best as you can, you still feel your legs slipping and sliding along this smooth, flat, icy surface. Roll a dexterity save to stay on your feet. May the gods be merciful to me. Fucking damn it, I got a five. Unfortunately, you could not get any traction on the ice, and your armored boots slid uncontrollably against the ground. You slip and fall right on your ass, Fuck. causing you quite a bit of pain, but you take no damage. Ouch. This is embarrassing. It's a good thing none of you are here to see this. I envy you, bitch. At least your bones aren't crushed in. Yeah, stop thinking you have it the worst out of us because you don't. You never show concern for anyone else except you and Eliza, you selfish cunt. Go eat your own shit, Marge. Why didn't you follow her to help me when you knew for a fact that I was in danger? Because you're a stupid pedophile witch and I hate witches. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I'm glad I abandoned you before we set off in search for our friends. The feeling's mutual, Whitney Houston. Fuck you, you green cunt. When we see each other next, I'm going to end you. Go ahead and try, bitch. She may not get the opportunity. Camilla sees the rabbit wraith leap down from above, its spear aiming straight for her neck. I'm gonna dodge away by rolling to the side. Yes! Excellent roll, pun intended. You spring yourself to the left and avoid the wraith's plunging attack just in time. It lifts its spear out from the ice and you see that it broke a deep hole in the ground. This gives me an idea. Once I finish my dodge, I stand myself up and then stomp my metal boot through the ice two times. Then I fasten my feet into those holes to stabilize myself. Good thinking, now you don't have to roll to see if you slip. That was the idea, now what does this furry fucker do? The rabbit wraith charges at you, it steps unaffected by the ice and thrusts its blade right between your eyes. I deflect its blow and run my blade straight through its neck. Okay, that was a seven, do I succeed? No, you don't, but it was close. Your foe isn't able to land its strike against you, but you also couldn't parry its weapon away like you wanted to. Instead, the wraith collides its spear into your sword so hard that it gets knocked out of your hand. You've been disarmed. This isn't good, but I've got a trick up my sleeve. Oh, do you now? Yes, I assume a defensive stance, ready to counter this bunny's next attack. Very well, you use your turn to do that, and the wraith slashes its spear, aiming for your neck. I disarm this fucker and then use its own spear against it. A 13, that has to be good enough. Because of the boost you got from your defensive stance, you just barely succeeded. In your opponent's vicious attempt to slice your head off, you managed to catch its weapon quite easily. 
Using your martial arts experience, you wrest the spear away and slash into its shoulder, knocking it back several meters. You've given the wraith a nasty blue gash, and it has taken 15 damage. Now I can finish it off with its own weapon. This is too easy. Unfortunately, you are only able to hold onto the wraith's spear for that brief moment before your hands start to freeze. This weapon is far too cold to hold any longer. You will take damage if you don't dispose of it now. This weapon is cursed and will kill me. I want to keep it, but no, I cannot. I throw this spear right into the rabbit's chest, hoping to get an extra hit in. Damn it. With that five, you chuck the icy spear at your opponent, but it catches it with ease and assumes an offensive stance, ready to attack you yet again. I find my sword and slide toward it as fast as I can, keeping myself steady on the ice. All right, that's an 18. As luck would have it, your sword didn't land too far away from you. The wraith stares you down and crouches before taking a massive bound toward you, slicing at your face while in midair. However, you manage to dodge its attack, sliding toward your weapon before getting a hold of it, keeping your footing the entire time. I stop myself and then dig two more holes into the ice where I stand. As soon as you finish doing that, the wraith charges a terrifying blue light into its sphere. It's ready to unleash everything it has at you in one final attack. I spend the last of my mana to charge up my own holy blast. This will be an epic magical showdown. Okay, that's a 14. Do I succeed? I will let you know. You conjure the most powerful holy attack you possibly can. Your prayers to the gods have been answered and they imbue their own strength into your divine, righteous blow. With the last of your mana spent, you unleash a powerful, bright yellow beam at the rabbit wraith. It, in turn, casts the most devastating bright blue ray of frost it is able to, and so your two magics collide in a spectacular display of magic, skill, and the combative nature of good versus evil. Eventually, and just barely, your magic overpowers the wraiths, and its frost beam is reduced to nothing except flakes of its former self. Your foe gets hit with the full blast of your attack and has been knocked down onto its back, taking 30 damage. The rabbit wraith is now at just five health. That's practically nothing. I'm going to finish it off by sliding toward it while it's still on the ground and plunging my sword into its fucking face. That was unlucky. Devil's balls. Marianne, can I please roll again? No, you can't. When you slide toward the wraith, your foot crashes against a small rock that protrudes from the ice. This untimely collision throws you off balance, and so you are hurtling on a one-way trip straight into your foe. Okay, so I should still be able to crush it and kill it from the impact? Not quite. Just before you crash into the wraith, it hoists its spear up and braces it firmly with its blade pointed toward your chest. If you keep sliding the way you do, you will run your own body straight through this deadly weapon. Roll for agility to avoid this fate. Come on, I can do this. Shit on a fucking grave, I deserve a redo. Again, you will get no such thing. You are sliding uncontrollably, and much to your dismay and horror, you pierce yourself straight through the rabbit wraith spear. It tears through your flesh from front to back, leaving two gaping wounds on your body. You scream in agony as the rabbit wraith snickers. It gets up and promptly threshes its spear from your body, tearing your wounds apart even more. You have just taken 20 damage and are now bleeding, losing one health every turn. As you are also in excruciating pain, you cannot take any actions for the next three turns. So I'm basically dead, I lost this fight? That is correct. The wraith stands above you proudly, its spear in hand. It is deciding whether to kill you now and end your suffering or to let you bleed out. I flip this bunny wraith the middle finger with both hands and yell, I still haven't lost this fight, you long-eared dickhead. The rabbit wraith chuckles at your taunt and steps aside, sitting on the ground. It relishes in the sight of your blood pouring out onto the clear, reflective ice. Your foe is clearly enjoying the spectacle of you bleeding out, suffering, and hopeless. As long as I'm alive, there's always hope. To be honest, I'm very surprised you came this close to defeating the rabbit wraith. I didn't design this encounter to be winnable by one person, let alone someone who is wounded. We'll still win this battle. I know help is on the way. You may know that, but Camilla is not so fortunate to know what Eliza is up to. Right. I still don't know that she's a demon. Let me get into character. <laughs> oh, fuck. I guess this is the end for me. My only regret is that I never got to say goodbye to my sweet Eliza. Hey, you can't die on us. I haven't gotten to kill you yet. Yeah, bitch, stay alive so I can tear your limbs off myself. Not before I've had my duel with her, you two. If any of you three lay a hand on my best friend, I'll rip you to fucking shreds. I'd like to see you try, cunt demon. Marianne, who's gonna get there first, us or Eliza? I'll tell you momentarily, but for the moment, no help 
has yet arrived for Camilla. A turn has passed, and she is now at just one health and cannot do anything besides await her own demise. I'm so cold. Is this what death feels like? You continue writhing on the ground, looking up at the rabbit wraith with utter contempt and anger. Though unable to do anything, your will to live burns strong. Eliza, please, I know you'll save me. Camilla, without you, I have no friends. I have nothing. I'm not going to let you die here. Using your superior demonic speed, you are able to outrun the rest of your party easily, and thus you are the first of them to reach Camilla. But this is not a pretty sight. In fact, it's quite possibly the most horrifying thing you could have ever witnessed. She is lying down in a pool of her own blood, growing paler by the second. You also see the rabbit wraith sadistically stand above your friend, awaiting her slow, agonizing death. No, keep holding on just a little longer. I'm here to save you. I sprint toward the motherfucking bunny and stab my nails into its chest. You thrust forth your five deadly weapons, but the wraith sidesteps away just in the nick of time, taking zero damage. It then bounds high up into the trees, escaping until it's well out of sight. After a few seconds, the ice beneath you begins to melt. It seems that this bunny has now abandoned the scene. What a pussy. Anyway, I'm here for you now. I take out my healing paste and then rub it into your wounds. Before you are able to reach for your paste, you hear the sharp, dominating voice of Carmilla booming through your skull. You are not to heal her wounds, pet. Go fuck yourself with a wooden stake, bitch. I can do what I want. Shit, that's a 15. You attempt to resist your master's order as hard as you can, and with your best friend in the whole world beside you, you succeed as you are instilled with a new sense of hope, friendship, and agency when in her presence. Whenever you are near Camilla, you only need to roll a 14 or higher to go against Carmilla's influence. Fuck yes, that's such a huge relief. I rubbed the paste into her injuries. Damn it, of all the times for me to get a mid-tier roll. An 11 is still adequate. When you administer your medicine to her, she starts to feel much better, as though the gods themselves have purified the insides of her body. Camilla, you are now at 21 health. Eliza, I knew you'd save me. You look interesting. Oh yes, there's a long story behind why I look like this. I'll explain later once we find the rest of our companions. Strike her. No, I don't want to attack her. You can't make me do this. What's going on? Who are you talking to? It's Carmilla. She's a vampire who can- Before you can finish answering Camilla, you feel your arm get forced up and then out toward her. You then try to slash your nails right into her flesh like a mindless killer on puppet strings. I dodge away just in time, confused as all hell. I got a 16, was that enough? Because you have just been healed, yes it was. Before Eliza can slice you up into several little pieces, you kick yourself into the air and barely evade her attack. She's only able to cut off several strands of your hair. I'm so sorry, sometimes my body gets forced to move by Carmilla's orders. It's part of why I look like this. You can explain all of that when we get out of this forest, but right now you need to get yourself under control. Kill her. Kill your best friend right now, pet. Never. Okay, I'm gonna try to cut your head off. You need to duck. Will do, hun. Awesome. Eliza darts toward you and slices her nails right at your neck. However, because she told you where she would strike, you easily dodge this attack. She whiffs in the air, smiling as she misses. Oh, you're an annoyingly clever witch. Be quiet. Yes, okay, Camilla, you need to run away right now. I'm too dangerous to be around you. Not going to happen. I won't ever abandon you, not after we finally found each other. We're going to be okay. I'm here for you no matter what. Camilla, please help me. I said silence. Run! With that 13, you have been forced mute by your master and can no longer talk to your best friend. You mentioned someone named Carmilla a few moments ago. Whoever she is, know that I will kill her for making you suffer like this. By my God's grace, I vow to rid you of her wicked curse and help you take back your free will. You really are a true friend. If I could talk right now, I'd say, fuck yes, I love you so much. Oh, you're so sweet. I wish Camilla could have heard that. She'll hear it soon enough when Eliza gets her voice back. Little kitten, you are to use your most powerful magic to kill Camilla Lightwielder. Fuck you, Carmilla. I can't believe I ever thanked you for anything. With that five, you give your best friend a death stare, ready to kill her. If I roll low now, will that decrease the damage I do? It sure will. Come on, please let me roll a one. Damn it, that's a fucking 19. How unfortunate. You raise both of your arms to the air and begin to cast your most devastating spell, one you acquired when you were first transformed. From your left palm emits a purple light, and from your right, 
a green one. Those lights then turn to flames and expand outward until they grow large enough to illuminate the entire area around you, bathing you and Camilla in those two dominating colors. Those flames then bellow out of your palms as though yearning to be cast. Resisting with all your strength, you slow yourself down as much as possible, but as Carmilla's influence is absolute, you must obey. You fire the most powerful, terrifying spell you've ever launched in your life. Eldric Twin Flames. The two pillars of green and purple fires are now flying at Camilla, ready to turn her to cinders. What power! I rush behind a tree to take cover, not that it would do any good. Oh wow, a 16. Do I survive? Miraculously you do, but by the skin of your teeth. You sprint behind the nearest and most sturdy looking tree you can find before Eliza's incredible demonic fire blasts scorch everything around you too, turning everything caught in the flames into mere cinders of their former selves. Her attack incinerates the tree that is protecting you, and it slowly turns into a cloud of ashes. The flames now barrel against your back, searing you. You scream out in excruciating pain, but still hold on to your life with everything you have. Luckily, after a few more seconds, the spell has ended and the flames die down before they are able to kill you, though they came close. You take 18 damage and are now at just three health. Shit, that fucking burns. I forgive you for grilling me alive, hun, but your magic hurts worse than a motherfucker. I am so sorry. You need to run away right now. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I killed you. Eliza, I know you're in there somewhere. You need to fight this. I must say, your friend's stronger than I thought, witch. She survived that spell and is still able to fight. Color me impressed. Just wait until the rest of my friends get here too. They'll rescue me and kick your ass. I highly doubt that. Moments after you finished launching your spell, both you and Camilla look over to see the fiery hellscape you have created. Eliza's purple and green flames turn to a natural orange, and they ignite the trees that weren't caught in her direct attack. The fire slowly spreads farther into the forest. My, my, what a show. Let this scar on the land serve as a testament to your great power. Someday you're going to die, Carmilla. Again, I doubt it. While Eliza continues her inner dialogue with our villain, Camilla starts to stand up. She's injured, but can still fight. I call out to Eliza once more, trying to get through to her. I shoo Camilla away before Carmilla can tell me to attack her again. Do you hear me, Eliza? I won't ever abandon you. If I could, I would demand that she ditch me, because there's no point in dying here when there's nothing she can do for me by herself. While the two of you still face each other, you notice past the flaming trees three black silhouettes. When you take a closer look at them, you see two familiar faces and one new one. Lana, Marge, and Skelga have finally arrived. Took us long enough. What the hell happened here? I bet this fire is all Camilla's fault. I'm coming for you, you piece of shit deal breaker. Eliza, what the fuck happened to you? You look amazing. I'd thank you if I could. Ladies, you're here. Thank the holy gods. Come here and help me with Eliza. She's been cursed by an evil vampire. No way, there's something I really want to do instead. Marge, what the hell are you going to do? I cast my leaf cutter spell, slicing this fucking cunt paladin into a hundred pieces. I dodge. Both of you roll against each other. Ha, too slow, bitch. I'll end you next time, Beyonce. With Camilla's 14 beating Marge's five, our paladin uses all the strength she has to roll to the side, letting all of our druid's razor sharp leaves fly right past her, burning up quickly as they soar in the air. Marge, you have also used up the last of your remaining mana to cast this spell. That won't matter. I'll bash this bitch paladin's head in with my awesome muscles. You stupid green bitch. What has gotten into you? She's injured and clearly no match for you. This isn't an honorable fight. Fuck you, fat ass. I'm at one health in case you forgot. Even if I wasn't, I don't give a fuck about honor. This bitch abandoned me and she's going to pay. Suit yourself, but there's nothing satisfying about killing a wounded foe. You should wait until you're both healed before going after her. Hard disagree, Skelga. I'm with Marge on this one. Kick that holy cunt's ass. I'm surrounded by lunatics. I charge at Marge, ready to slice her in half for attacking my best friend. Not so fast, little kitten. You won't be saving her life. Fuck. Carmilla forces your body still, rendering you unable to assist Camilla in any way. Let's see how this fight plays out. Neither of them are looking too good. With Marge at just one health and Camilla at three, the next blow either of them lands against each other could be fatal. Are you too sure you want to fight? I'm sure that I don't. Marge, 
You can try to kill me later, but right now we need to work together to get out of this mess. Not a chance, bitch. I'm taking my chance while I have it. Kick her ass, beautiful. I cannot believe this is happening. You can beat her. You're the greatest paladin in the entire kingdom. She won't be for long once I cast my... Oh, shit, wait, I'm out of mana. Marianne, do I have any melee weapons? You don't. That may be something you want to fix later. For now, your only options are some rocks and sticks on the ground. Okay, I pick up a stick and whack Camilla in her fucking face. I parry that stick away and stab her in the chest. Shit! Marge has just rolled an 18 against Camilla's two. With one swift swing, you slam your stick into Camilla's head, knocking her onto the ground. She lays there unconscious, bleeding from her wound, and is now at zero hit points. You fucking cunt! I'll kill you for that! Wait, so am I dead now? Not yet. You must roll three successful death saving throws or get healed by an ally in order to survive. Fail in your throws, and it's game over for you, sister. Okay, here goes. An 11, is that good? Yes, you needed to roll at least a 10. You'll roll for another one on your next turn. Not if I can help it. I bash her in the head one more time, finishing her off for good. If you kill her, Marge the Green, I will stop at nothing to make sure you die a slow and painful death. Shit, I did not think this through. Come on, Carmilla, let me at her. All right, little kitten. I'll let you have this one. Do what you wish to the druid. You're dead, you pathetic excuse for a companion. I don't even know why we were allies in the first place. Before Eliza can reach me, I smash Camilla's face in like I said I would. You're a goddamn psycho. Marianne, are you gonna just let her player kill me like that? Yes, I am. This is a game where death in PvP is always a possibility. Marge, roll against Eliza. Druidic dog shit, that's a seven. You're mine, you fascist shithead. Eliza rolls a 13, so she dashes toward Marge as quickly as she can. Before our druid knows it, she sees five razor-sharp nails have been thrust deep into her chest. Gurgling out blood, Marge loses all of her health and goes unconscious. I hope you're happy, cunt witch. Over the moon, actually. Marge, roll a death-saving throw. Shit, a three. You have lost your first throw. If you lose two more, you're a goner. I slide my nails out of her chest, letting her collapse onto the ground. Then I do the world a favor and execute her by chopping her fucking head off. That's it. I'm not going to allow any more of this. I set Lana down and then run toward Eliza before throwing my fist right into her demonic face. I block. Fuck, you lucky bitch. Take that, Satan. Kick her ass for me, babe. Skelga, you launch your powerful fist at Eliza's face, punching her square in the jaw. She takes 10 damage and her head shifts to the side from your blow. However, she remains composed and sturdy. Yeah, that was a good punch. Let's see if you can handle one of mine. I backhand her as hard as I can. I dodge and then go for a strong uppercut against her chin. Fuck. Ouch. Eliza swiftly strikes Skelga, sending her flying backward. She takes 10 damage from this harsh blow and is now at zero health. Her unconscious body is hurtling right at Lana and she still cannot move. She must pray she does not get hit. Roll for luck. God damn cunt fucks, that's a two. This isn't good. Before you know it, Skelga's body crashes into you, bouldering onto your already broken self. You take six damage, more than enough to send you to zero health. Shit, I'm dead. This is all your fault, you fucking chonker. Shut the hell up, little lady, and just roll your death saving throws. Nice, that's a 12. Cunts. Skelga succeeds in her first one while Lana fails hers. Four of our heroes are now unconscious, but fighting for their strength, balancing on the narrow line between life and death. Eliza looms powerfully over them all, taking in the full sight of this carnage. I run to Camilla and try to wake her up. You dash as quickly as you can to your dear friend, taking her into your arms and shaking her about. Unfortunately, you are unable to wake her. In order to bring her back from the brink of death and into the world of the living, you will need to heal her with something like a spell or a potion. Fucking Christ, no, I should have chosen a healing spell when I rolled this character. If I could talk right now, I'd say that dying in your arms would be a fitting way for me to go. Don't think like that, hun. You're going to be just fine. Marianne, I searched the area for ingredients. Roll a perception check for that. Heaven's asshole, that's a four. You look all around for something you could brew into a healing item, but spot no such ingredients. Oh, no, 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 I can't lose her like this. As you futilely attempt to wake her up, you hear a series of booming footsteps past the burning trees. Looking over to the source, you see two large black silhouettes. When they rush closer, their green skin becomes more visible and their appetites all the more obvious. The hopping glutton and bounding glutton have arrived and turned toward Lana and Skelga.
Oh, thank the nine hells. They're going after you too. Come on, Camilla, we're getting out of here. I hoist her up and run away. What the fuck, cunt? You can't just let us get eaten by these green perverts. I can and I will, you frog fucking thought. I did not fuck these frogs. It's true, she didn't. I was there the whole time. Real glad you clarified that for her, hun. Ah, oh, shucks, anytime. I was being sarcastic, you fucking hippo. Suck a prickly dick, you ungrateful little lady. I swear when you're in real peril, you're meaner than a minotaur in heat. Maybe if your fat ass hadn't fallen on me, I could have done some sick move to get out of this. Lana, all your bones are broken. Don't forget that I'm the only reason you made it here alive. Hey, barbarian bitch, I'm a pretty big reason for that too. If this argument were canon and I were awake, I'd be laughing my ass off. And I'd be laughing right alongside you, hun. Let's get out of here. Not so fast, little kitten. Oh fuck, what do you want? You are to place your friend on the ground and then eliminate those two frog demons before they kill any of your companions. What in the nine hells? Why do you want them alive so badly? You'll know that soon enough. Do as your master commands, pet. No way, I'm not endangering Camilla's life by keeping her here. Fucking shit, a five. How dreadful. You're just as disobedient as ever. Though you want to get far away from this scene more than anything, Carmilla's influence pulls you back into the fray. You place Camilla down and charge at the gluttons head on. Those demons don't stand a chance against you, you amazing, powerful demon witch. Thanks, Paladin. The big one looks like it's half dead already. I'll end its misery by thrusting my nails straight through its heart. Oh, come the fuck on! Not quite enough for a one-hit kill. You aim your hand at the hopping glutton's chest, but it dashes to its side just enough so you miss its heart. Unfortunately for your foe, your nails still pierce their way deep into its chest. You have dealt 34 damage, and the hopping glutton is now at just six health. Next turn, you're dead meat. Speaking of next turn, you four roll your death saves. No, just one more fail and I'm dead. Fuck yeah, I'm one and one. Same here, Skelga. Wow, what good odds, I'm two and oh. Lucky bitch, when I recover, I'm going to snap your neck. You do realize if you get up, I'll just knock you on your ass again. Be careful with making promises you can't keep, Eliza. The bounding glutton springs off from the ground and launches itself right at your chest. How do you react? I catch it before it can hit me and then throw it into the ground. Fuck, these dice have been cursed. Oh no, that's a terrible three. You mistime the grab and the bounding glutton smashes straight into you. You fall backward, flailing your weapons about, slicing your foe in the face, dealing seven damage. Sadly, you've just taken 20 damage and are now lying face up on your back. I get up quickly! It's not your turn yet, Elizabeth. It's the hopping gluttons. It lumbers toward you and raises its leg up high, about to stomp your face in with its gargantuan foot. How will you try to defend yourself? I launch a fireball at its face to scare it away. I'm on a motherfucking losing streak here. Everyone gets this unlucky in Dungeons and Dragons at some point. With that one, you fail to cast your spell in time, and the hopping glutton takes full advantage of this opportunity. It slams its foot down as hard as it can onto your face, dealing a whopping 25 damage, even with all of your defense bonuses. So it looks like I'm going to die now too? I'll be honest, I didn't expect you to get this unlucky against these two. Guess that's the magic of Dungeons and Dragons. As for you four, please roll your death saves. No, I may meet my god sooner than expected. Crap, a loss. I hope I get to meet Conan in the afterlife. Great, I just won my only roll. You three are now at one and two on your death saves, and Camilla is two and one. Well, it looks like we're going to get TPK'd. Can't wait to roll up a new character. Fortunately for you and all of your companions, you suddenly see the hopping glutton's throat get slid open. You have no idea where this injury came from, but it gurgles on its own blood before falling backward, dead. The bounding glutton looks over at the new figure who has just joined the fray. You look in the same direction and see Carmilla with a blood-red sword in her hand. What the shit? What are you doing here? I couldn't just let you and your friends die, little kitten. Carmilla braces her sword against the remaining frog demon as it charges at her, and with one swift but powerful stroke, she slices the bounding glutton in half, dealing over 130 damage. Ah, that was a good workout. Now that those two are out of the way, I need to decide what to do with the five of you. She takes a few steps around, looking at each and every one of you for what feels like an eternity before letting out a deep sigh. Ugh, what a pity. You five had such great potential, and yet your paths seem destined to end here. All of your unfulfilled hopes, dreams, and desires will remain such, should I do nothing. Shall I extend your lives, only to expect one of you to make an attempt on my life? 
Or should I simply leave you all here to bleed out? Better yet, I could end all of your suffering right now with one swift stroke of my blade. Oh, but what good would that do any of us? I, for one, would like to see your journeys continue. And if any one of you becomes a problem for me, I can simply kill you right then and there. For now, I heal you all. She lifts her hands in the air and a pleasant green aura surrounds all of your bodies. Every single one of you wakes up and feels alive and healed. You have also regained all of your health and mana. Lana, upon being healed, your bones painlessly fix back into place and you can walk without any pain at all. Holy shit, thank you so much, vampire lady. You're quite welcome, Lana. Wait, how do you know my name? I know all of your names. Your adventures, battles, and arguments have been most entertaining to watch. Oh, geez, you mean you saw everything I did? Only when I was paying attention. Though you and your friend's excursion at the lake was addicting, to say the least. Gross, how dare you spy on us like that? And the way all of you kicked Askeladd's ass and collapsed his hideout. Oh, yes. That was some of the best entertainment I've seen in a long time. What are you, a fucking god? No, she just has this magic mirror that can see anything on command. That's a pretty useful tool. I hope you saw how majestically I swam as a dolphin. I did. You're a very attractive dolphin. Ah, oh, thank you. I don't know what to say. Carmilla, I thank you for healing me and saving my life. But you need to release Eliza from her curse right now. You're in no position to make demands of me, holy warrior. However, you may accompany her if you wish. Excuse me, what? Ladies, I've seen you all fight valiantly tonight, and to put it mildly, I'm very impressed. I see great potential in all of you, and I want to help turn you five into the best versions of yourselves you can be. Does that mean I'll get to become a cool, sexy demon like Eliza here? It does, Ms. Ballbust. If you're so inclined, I can make you into the finest ball-busting demon Alteria has ever seen. Count me in, hun. Whoa, there's no fucking way you're actually allying with her. She said she can make me stronger, so I'm going to follow her. Lana, you're a real piece of work, you know that? You're not taking me or Eliza anywhere. Now let her go before I make you release her. I point my sword at Carmilla, threatening to cut her head right off if she doesn't do what I say. Don't you dare touch her! I stand in front of the vampire, babe. Get out of the way, Lana. She's evil. No, she isn't. All she did was save our lives and heal us. She's the best fucking character in this whole game. Wow, real nice endorsement there. There is something seriously wrong with you, Lana. Yeah, she's going to do that whole mind control shit on you. Be careful who you side with. Shut the fuck up, both of you. I can walk because of her. Carmilla, teach me your secrets, please. In time, Miss Bulbust. In time. Lana, I'll tell you this only one time. Get out of the way or I'll kill you right here and now. What will you do, stab me in the stomach like last time? You deserve to die then and you deserve it now. I swing my sword at Lana's fucking neck. Before you can complete your attack, your entire body feels frozen up in place. You cannot move a muscle. You see past Lana that Carmilla has her hand up and is casting hold person on you. Roll to resist this. All right, that's a 15. Unfortunately, you needed a 17 to keep yourself from being held in place. Your body now more resembles a statue. Way to go, Carmilla. I love you even more. She walks up to you, Camilla, and smiles deviously. You will be most fun to break, holy warrior. Fuck you, you pale undead cunt. I'll never become your demon. We'll see about that. For now, sleep. She casts a spell that nearly knocks you out tired. Roll a constitution save to stay awake. Why the hell am I not surprised? That's an eight. You fall asleep standing up and as though by instinct, crawl down into a more comfortable sleeping position. Camilla, Camilla, wake up. She can't hear any of us, pet. So vampire lady, you're very powerful, so I'm not gonna try and fight you at all. That's a wise decision, Marge. Did you need something? I just have a question. What are you gonna do with all of us? Yeah, I'm curious about that as well. Well, firstly, we must all make for my home. I invite you all into my humble castle. Sweet, let's get going then. Not so fast, rogue. As a precaution, I'll have to put all of you to sleep during this journey. I must keep the location of my castle a secret. That's fine by me. Put me to sleep, babe. Fuck no, I'm not going with you. Me neither. You're probably going to eat us or something. I pick up Camilla and try to run away again. Sweet dreams, ladies. Nighty night. Well, that's it for me, I'm pooped. At least now I have time to get some proper shut-eye. Shit eaters, I'll bet anything Carmilla cursed these dice from beyond the game. Even if that were possible, I wouldn't allow her to do that. 
All of you fall asleep where you stand and then gently lay down, relaxed, at ease, and then drift off into your pleasant dreamlands. So deep is your sleep that you do not feel your bodies being moved and hauled off into a cart, driven by Carmilla herself. It's been a while since I've had proper human guests at my home. Next stop, the Twisted Castle. With all of you sleeping peacefully in the vampire's cart, comfortable yet uncertain for the future, it is here that we will take a short break from our session. Oh, thank Jesus, that was a long session. It's just getting started. We're here until we finish this whole campaign. Yes, I get to be here longer. I can't stand going back to that building. You mean the Capitol? The one that looks like a giant boob, yeah. I'm going to start calling our workplace the boob building now. Please don't, it's a very sacred environment to me. Of course you say that, you take your job seriously, you fucking square. I prefer not to have to pick up Joe Biden's shit every time he needs to use the bathroom. Jesus, is he really that bad? You don't wanna know, the White House is worse than a nursing home. I have no desire to visit the White House until a clean Christian president resides in it again. As for my state of Arkansas, it can wait a few more hours, it's not going anywhere, and I wanna keep playing this story to the end. Me too, and we'll start up again in just a few minutes. Then it's a good thing Marge ordered all that food a while back. It's not even fucking here yet, and it's been well over an hour now. I'm fucking starving. They're getting a one-star review if they don't show up in five minutes. Lauren, I've got some Cheetos in the kitchen since you're that hungry. Bring them on over, Mama Marianne. Will do, I'll be right back. Does anyone else here want something? Ooh, could you get me some of that smart food popcorn? Uh, while you're in the kitchen, could you put some chocolate pop tarts in the toaster? Same here, make mine strawberry flavored, please. And make me a protein shake. I need to keep my figure nice and bulky. All right, all right, that's a lot of orders. I'll be in the kitchen making your stuff and also pondering where this campaign is going to go next. Please behave while I'm out of the room, ladies. We will, I promise. Quick, now that she's gone. Lana Bulbust. You little slut. I can't wait to thrust my long, sexy fingers right up your goddamn cunt and give you the best fuck of your life. Oh, yes, give it to me, Carmilla. I'm telling Marianne. No, please don't. Here, I'll let you play with it now. Very well. I just need to check if she has the voice I want. Uh-huh. Found it. I'm the 44th President of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama, here to say that Kamala Harris is the coolest, most fly gal I've ever met. Ah, uh, thank you, Barry. My turn. When I win this election, I'm going to make sure every leftist, communist, fascist gets the helicopter treatment. Jesus Christ, Marjorie. What? You can't just go out and say that kind of shit. Our Christian theocracy will require finesse and subtlety to implement. But I want it now. Sarah, you may come off as a reasonable Republican, but you're just as psychotic as those two. Fuck you, Kamala. Your Lord and Savior Obama is just a Black Patrick Bateman. Well, Obama has something he'd like to say to Trump. Suck my big black dick, Donald Trump. Oh, it's on. No, Obama, I will not suck your dick. You, however, can kiss my fat orange ass. Enough, I wanna try. Hunter, let's go do some father-son cocaine. Then I'll buy you all the hookers you want with the presidential credit card. See, he admits it. I say lock him up and throw away the key. I wish I could have been one of those hookers. You, I'll fuck nearly anything, but Hunter's a line I won't cross. It's not my fault I'm into guys like that. Maybe that's why I showed off his fat, meaty, coke lace cock on live television during a congressional hearing. He sure is packing, I will admit. I don't think I'll ever be able to unhear this conversation. Okay, before we hear any more of this cursed shit, I'm taking my turn with the voice machine. There's something I wanna hear Carmilla say. Eliza, I have just realized the error of my ways and have inexplicably decided to release you from my control. You are free. Woohoo, thanks, babe. You know, that wasn't canon, right? Shut up, I can dream. Dreams will only get you so far. If you want to be free of this curse, you'll have to earn it the hard way. Wow, that was actually motivational. Never forget that I'm with you every step of the journey, Eliza. As long as we work together, we can accomplish anything. We shall see about that, dear ladies. You underestimate us, Carmilla. When the time comes, we'll kick your ass. Wait. Did it just talk on its own? 
Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. I can't believe the Woman Politician series now has four episodes that total over three hours long. That's like one whole Lord of the Rings movie or two shorter movies combined. Anyways, please like, share, and subscribe to President Ashen Hart and donate to the show by following the link in the description. More episodes of Woman Politicians Play Dungeons and Dragons are coming soon. I can't wait to see you all there.